currently, in the current version of the model, when you increase the minimum wage, you do depress labor demand, and that leads to, when you increase the minimum wage, that leads to lower employment. And so I've said there are two things that you could do. So one would be to introduce an efficiency wage element. So if you introduce an efficient, a way that you would introduce that is that uh, labor productivity, if you have efficiency wage, labor productivity increases with the wage. So your labor productivity, what we've called A so far, would be A would be a function of the wage W with a prime, the derivative, positive, so that when you increase the wage, you increase productivity. And uh, in a world like this, when you increase the minimum wage, so it's true that you increase the cost of firm, but if you also increase the productivity, uh, then you know firms may not be really affected by the minimum wage, and the minimum wage may not increase employment. So if you look, basically what matters uh, in the labor demand is A, What matters is A over W, the ratio between productivity and the wage. And we've seen that this ratio, A over W, is what determines the labor demand. You can see it from, if I go up, right, so, I mean, let's go up to the expression of the labor demand. Right, you can see it here. Here you have A, here you have W. So what matters to the labor demand is the ratio between these two things. And so if you have an efficiency wage uh, module, then your productivity becomes a function of the wage over the wage. And um, so if A of W divided by W is about constant, so when you increase W, the wage AW increases in sync with that increase in the wage, then W does not affect the labor demand. And then that means that the minimum wage does not reduce employment. So that would be one way to do it. Now, what's tricky with that is, um, so that's good, but you know, this uh, efficiency wage module should also be you know, present for any wage level. You know? So, even if you're like a paid more than the minimum wage, if I increase your wage and efficiency wage matters, then you should also boost productivity. And so, if that's true for any wages, it means that the wage would never affect labor demand actually. So, the ratio between productivity A and the wage would never affect labor demand. But the fact that the wage doesn't move in sync with productivity is what we use to explain business cycles. If you remember, we said that uh, business cycles are caused by labor productivity. And when labor productivity falls, the wage doesn't fall in sync. So that leads to less labor demand and higher unemployment. When productivity goes up, the wage doesn't, uh, doesn't move in sync. So that higher productivity leads to higher labor demand and less unemployment. So this ratio between productivity and wage is what we used to explain business cycle. Now I'm saying that um, if I want to, you know, if the finding that the wage doesn't have, that the minimum wage doesn't affect employment is true, and I take this efficiency wage route, um, what I have to do is basically I have to make the ratio between productivity and the wage something that doesn't depend on the wage, which is exactly like what happens when wages are flexible. But if I do that, then I cannot explain business cycles. Um, so this would be kind of a tricky modification to, the, to make to the model because then you neutralize the effect of the minimum wage, but you also stop being able to explain business cycles, which you know are a real thing. So um, this wouldn't be a very desirable, I think, modification for that reason. Uh, okay, so that would be a risk here. If you if you decided to go that route. So 
So there may be, you know, variant of that uh, modification that we could do, but you know, it's not it's not obvious, and so that would require some thinking. So that's one route that you could take. Um, the other route would be to introduce an aggregate demand element. So the aggregate demand element that we can introduce to try to you know, rationalize the fact if that fact was confirmed that the minimum wage doesn't have an effect on uh, employment would be to postulate that uh, you know, in the same way that uh, with efficiency wage theory the uh, productivity increases with the wage here it would be kind of the same thing you would be saying that uh, the sales by firms um, would increase with the wage that you pay uh, that you pay minimum wage workers. So the idea would be that um, the wage goes up, hence uh, you know disposable income goes up, hence spending by household goes up, hence sales by firm goes up, hence, you know, if firms are able to sell more, to, to have more sales, um, it's as if, you know, what we could call the effective productivity of worker uh, goes up. And this you could model it in our, in, in our little model as saying that A goes up. Okay, and so um, introducing an aggregate demand element would be very, you know, it would be kind of um, very similar to the efficiency wage element, although it would have a different story. But uh, in reduced form, what you could do is, you know, uh, you could introduce. A productivity which is a of omega with a prime of, uh, of w excuse me with a prime of w that's positive an increasing function of uh, w so exactly like in the efficiency wage story except that now it's a different mechanism uh, so what is this effective productivity as i talk about well <coughs> think about it so what matters to so think about a restaurant um, and think about waiters that are employed by the restaurant. You know, in a sense, waiters they always have the same productivity. If you have, you know, two waiters, there's an amount of meal that you can serve in, in an hour, right? and that doesn't really change. You know, the technology of being a waiter doesn't really change. But if you measure, if you're a firm and you measure how productive your waiter is, how much income comes out of the waiter's job, actually, it's not not everything is in the waiter's hands. A lot of it actually depends on the demand to the restaurant. So if you have many customers who arrive at the restaurants and the restaurant is full and all your tables are full, then your waiter is going to become very productive because the waiter will have a lot of tables to wait and then a lot of income is going to come in from that waiter. If nobody shows up at the restaurant, the tables are empty. Even if your waiter is the best waiter in the world, the most polite, the most dedicated, the productivity of the waiter will be zero just because there, there's nobody who is asking, uh, you know, to use the waiter service. So you can see that the productivity of a worker from the firm's perspective depends very much on the demand that uh, that firm is facing. Um, and in fact, that's exactly the idea, uh, you know, that that cap that's captured by a lot of work that works on product markets and how. Uh, you know, demand for a firm's goods or services actually is going to manifest itself like labor productivity, you know, once we look at the labor market. So a firm that faces a lot of demand is, you know, looks very much like a firm that's very productive from a labor demand perspective. You know, they'll tend to have a high labor demand and they'll tend to hire a lot of workers. So a firm may hire a lot of workers either because it's very productive and so can make a good profit on these workers, or because there's a big demand, and so these workers 
you know, also behave as if um, they were very productive. Okay, so these two things are actually very tied together. Whether you have a good production process that makes workers productive, or whether you face a big demand that makes also workers um, very productive. Uh, and so here, if you wanted to capture that aggregate demand element, that maybe the minimum wage would actually boost aggregate demand, we could also introduce a productivity that kind of depends on the wage, you know. Uh, and you know, that would act on the labor demand exactly like we've seen with the efficiency wage theory, with also the same caveat, you know. If your wage boosts uh, your demand like this, then, you know, we still have a problem uh, about explaining, you know, about explaining business cycles uh, and so on. Uh, so the same limitations can kind of apply. So, you know, before we start modifying the model, we need to have more evidence on the effect of minimum wage. There has been a good amount of research, but there's no consensus between the people who say minimum wage is bad for uh, unemployment or minimum wage has no effect on unemployment. So we first need the empirical folks to uh, resolve their differences, and then we'll, we'll see how and whether the, you know, the matching model needs to be modified. Uh,